Hi, I'm Maggie from maggiescrochet.com and this video is sponsored by Premier Yarns. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little floral dishcloth or it could be used as a washcloth. And this was made using Premier's Home Cotton Solid Yarn and they also come in multicolors. And there's 27 colors total and it's a medium number four yarn. And this yarn is 85% cotton and 15% polyester. And what that does is it makes your projects last longer and they dry quicker, which is really great when you're making a dishcloth or a, a washcloth like this. Um, this is machine wash and tumble dry. And the solids come in, in a 2.8 ounce ball and the multis are a 2.1 ounce ball. And the knit gauge is a US number eight needle and the crochet hook is a, an I-9. So in this, um, the skill level for this is um, easy and the gauge isn't really um, that important on, on a project like this. And the finished measurement is about nine inches by nine inches square and you'll need one ball of each color for this and the recommended hook for this project is a g6 or a four millimeter crochet hook and then the only other thing you need is a yarn needle so now i'm going to take you to a close-up camera um, instructional video on how to make this and the links to everything are listed below and thank you for watching So here's a close up of the spring flowers washcloth or dishcloth and I'm going to switch up my colors and I'm going to have yellow in the center and then a little bit of yellow out here. Then I'm going to switch to white and then I'm going to have a pink flower with a yellow center and then put the um, pink out here. So to get started I have my yellow and my G crochet hook, which is a Deborah Norva wood crochet hook, and it's very warm and light. I usually, probably about 90 some percent of the time, I have a wood hook now in my hands when I'm crocheting. It makes a huge difference. So I'm going to chain four, and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch in the first chain to form a ring. And to do that, all I got to do is reach over and go insert my hook into the first chain, yarn over, draw up a loop, and then I hold the circle open like this because I know that this is part of the slip stitch and I don't want to get confused. So right here is the center of the ring. Then the directions say to chain four and then it says to double crochet and chain one seven times into the ring. So this chain four counts as a double crochet and a chain one. And I'm also going to work over the end of my starting chain. And I'm going to go right into the center of the ring and put a double and then chain one. And I'm going to do that six more times. So you see here I've got two, four, six, and seven. And I'm going to land up with eight double crochets and eight chain one spaces. So when I get done, all I have to do is slip stitch in the first double crochet, which is the third chain of the beginning chain four. So go in here and then bring that through there. And now because I worked over my end of the starting chain, I can pull it. You don't want to pull it too tight, but I can close up that circle in the middle. That's one of the best reasons for working over that end. So now it says to finish off. So to finish off, I'm just going to make one more chain like this. I'm going to tighten the back part and then I'm going to snip right here. Let me see, right there. I'm going to snip it. 
I always leave about a five or six inch end on my um, when I finish off because I go back and sew my ends in. So anyway, now it says to join your flower color right here. And mine is going to be um, this pink color right here. And so to join, I'm going to make a slip stitch. So it says to join in the chain one space. So any chain one space, I'm going to insert my hook into the chain one space. I have a slip knot. Put that over my hook and then bring that forward like that. And then it says to chain two. So I'm just going to go one, two. And that's joining with a slip stitch there. And now it says to double crochet, treble, double, half in the same space. So I'm working a pedal here. There's a double. Now a treble. Now a double. And a half treble. I mean a half double. Right there in the same space. And then it says to half, double, double, treble, double, half in each chain one space around. So I do a half, a double, a treble, a double, a half double, and that's for that one. I'm going to go on to the next one, do a half, a double, a treble, my yarn's coming over here, now a double, and a half. So just like that, you continue around and it's going to get a little bit roughly like this. So continue around and then when you get the petals done, I'll show you the next round of this flower. So I've completed all eight petals and now I'm going to join with a slip stitch. So there's a beginning chain two and you Insert your hook in the second chain, draw a loop out, and then draw that through the loop on your hook, and that closes that round two. So now it says to work two single crochets in each of the next four stitches. So I'm going to do so. Okay, so now it says to slip stitch in the next stitch, which is the first stitch of the next petal, and then do the same thing all the way around. So I'm going to do two single crochets in the double, the treble, the double, and the half. So there's eight across the top of the petal, and that's completes that one and now I'm going to slip stitch in the next stitch and then two half double two singles in each of the next four stitches. So I'm going to continue like that around and then I'll come back um, I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first single and then I'll come back and we'll start putting the background on. So for round four, I'm going to join on to the double crochet stitches of round one. And to do so, I need to work behind the petals back here and around the post of the double crochet stitch. And then all of this is is a single crochet around the post, which means around the side of the stitch instead of in the top of the stitch. You do a single crochet and then you chain five and then you do that all the way around and then that gives you the loops that you need to get the border um, 
happening on the back side. So um, right now, this is my flower. And even if you just did this part of the dishcloth, this is adorable. I've never made a flower like this and I just love this. So cute. So now I have a slip stitch on my hook and a slip knot. Now I'm gonna work on the back side of the flower right now. And I'm gonna start with a loop on my hook. I'm, 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 it's easiest for me to join with a single crochet around any double crochet stitch. So that means I'm just gonna insert my hook. I've got my loop here. Insert my hook, yarn over, draw that out, and then yarn over and draw through two. And then I'm going to chain five and then I'm going to go to the next double crochet on the back side. So that would be this one right here. And I'm going to go around it. Like I'm going around the side of it. And then I'm going to do a single crochet. The only thing that you'll notice here is that those single crochet stitches are showing on the opposite side. I don't know whether I like that or not and it actually might look kind of cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. But you might wanna make that round in the same color as your center. Like it could be a yellow and then you could switch to your white background color after you do this loop round. So it's all up to you. Um, you can do it however you like. So I'm gonna continue on with this. So I'm going to chain five like that and go to the next double crochet and single crochet around the side. Chain five. Move to the next one. Go around it. Put my hook around it like that. Chain five. And then move to the next one. Chain five. And move to the next one. Okay, all the way around, then you're going to land up having eight chain five loops. And you end with a chain five. And then you join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. So that single crochet that I, when I joined with a single, when I come back around, it looks just like a single crochet stitch. And I'm going to join by Inserting my hook there, yarn over, bring the loop out like that. So now on the back side, it looks like this. You know what? Look at that. Oh my gosh, I'm always seeing something. If I would have done this on the front side, that would have created another little dimension to the flower. So cute. Look at that. All right, so now... It says slip stitch and next chain five space. So got a chain five space right here and I'm gonna slip stitch just like that. And then it says um, chain three, one, two, three. And then it says work two double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. Cause that chain three counted as a double and then I'm going to chain three and work three double crochets. I'm going to get on this blue paper here so you can see me. I'm going to work three doubles into the same space. And so that's what that looks like right there. So now I am going to chain two and single crochet in the chain five space. Chain two. One, two single crochet in this one one two and now i'm going to work a corner of three doubles 
chain three, three doubles. See, every other one I'm making a corner, so it'll turn into a square. Chain two. See right here, it's looking like that. Well, let me hold it like this. If you pull the petals forward, it's looking like that on the back side. So yours should look like that. That's one side. So you just do the same thing all the way around. You do a chain two, single, chain two, work a corner. Every other one you're working a corner, which is three doubles. Chain two, no, chain three, and three doubles. Mm. Okay, chain two. Okay, then you single in the chain five space, chain two, and you join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet, which is the beginning chain three. So you just count one, two, three, and you're going right in that third chain of the beginning chain three, just like that. Like that. So that completes that round, which is round five. Now it's saying with a contrasting color to join in any corner chain three space, chain three and work the same thing, and then chain two, two doubles in each of next. All right, let me look at this. So this is gonna be two doubles chain two across. So on the sides they work two doubles instead of three on your typical granny square. So on this round, on all the rounds it's the same. On the corner it's um, three doubles, chain three, three doubles always. And then along the sides it's always two doubles, chain two, two doubles. So right here, since I want to stay with the same color, I am going to slip stitch over to the corner. But the directions will tell you how to do it with the, this kind of color combination where you're gonna finish off after this round. But right now, I'm over to my corner. I slip stitch in each stitch across and then I slip stitch into the corner. Then I'm going to chain three. Let me see what they have you doing. Um, chain three, two doubles. Chain three for the corner. Okay, now it's chain two and two double crochets across the spaces of the side. One, two, and then in here. One, two, and then the corner again. Always a chain three in the corners and chain twos along the sides. Chain two, 
chain two, two doubles on the sides. Chain two, chain three for the corner, three doubles in the same space. So you can see how it's starting to look here. So you're going to um, actually, after you join this round, you're actually going to keep slip stitching to the corner in the directions, just like I just showed you. So every round now after this all the way up to round nine is going to be the granny rounds. They look like granny squares. And I personally think granny squares are awesome. At one point I heard a lot of um, you know downplaying granny squares but they've been around they're here to stay forever as long as there's crochet they'll be granny squares so I guess I just embrace them I think you can have a lot of fun with them okay so now I'm done <laughs> I'm done with that round so it looks like that isn't it cute I actually kind of like the white in there it worked out fine. It gives the flower a little bit of a pop. You know, like it was an accent or something. Okay, so in the end I'm going to chain two and I'm going to join with the slip stitch to the first beginning chain or the first double crochet. And then again I'm going to slip stitch over to the corner and slip stitch in the chain three space and then I'm going to chain three and then I'm going to work the corner again so it's the same round all the way around so it's three chain three three doubles chain three three doubles three and then chain two along the sides and two doubles in the chain two space. So continue on in this pattern, in this fashion. There. Just keep doing your rounds exactly like that. And so I just did, I just started this round right here. So there's only um, three more rounds after that. And then finish off, and I'll come back and show you how to do the hanger and the edging. So here is my dishcloth and I love, love, love the colors and I'm going to put um, pink around the outside and I kept wanting to do the three double crochets chain one along the sides instead of the two double crochets um, chain two. So I actually had to rip back a little bit and you might even see one that I messed up on but I'm not tearing back anymore. So. Um, now it's time for this outside border that you see here and I'm going to start with the corner that has the hanging loop on it and to do this I don't know if I need this blue sheet anymore well we'll see and what I'm going to do I'm going to join in a corner um, where I have an end and when I know that there's going to be some really close stitching, I do work over my ends. But only if I know that I can work a lot of um, stitches over that. And I also, I'll work it, them over the stitches for several inches just to guarantee that that's not coming out. So, on occasion, I do do that and I figured I would do it right now. So, you start with a slip knot on your hook and you're going to join with a single crochet into the any corner but I like the corner that has the joining there and then I'm going to yarn over draw up a loop and then draw through two loops on my hook and that's joining with a single then I'm gonna chain 15 wait a minute it says 
work two single crochets in the first corner and then chain 15 okay there's my 15 right there okay so then in the same corner and I'm gonna work over this end here I'm going to work two single crochets So just like that, now my hanger is created right there. And then I'm gonna work a single crochet in each double crochet and I'm working over that end too. Like this. And then I'm gonna work two single crochets into the chain two space. And then I'm gonna single in each double crochet and then single, two singles in the chain two space. And I'm gonna tug on my end just a little bit, make sure it's real straight inside of there. And I can keep working over it, or I could stop right there. And it wouldn't hurt anything to keep working over it, just to be super sure it's not going anywhere. But I think after this chain two space, I've had enough. So I've worked um, single crochet stitches all the way along the side. And in the corner, I'm just gonna work three single crochets. And then that gives me a nice little squared um, side there. And then the same thing all the way across. I need to get rid of this paper now. Let me see if I can leave it right there. Okay. Then I'm just gonna single all the way across. So then, when I come all the way around back to the beginning, all I gotta do is work singles in each one of these doubles, and then join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet, and then finish off. And one more thing I'm gonna show you is how I sew my ends in. So to sew my ends in, I just thread my yarn needle, and I go along the back side, and none of this is gonna show back here, even if I go white into yellow. So I'm just gonna go into the thickest part of the stitches like that. And then wherever my needle came out, I'm gonna go a little bit behind it, and then come back out again. And then go behind where I just came out, and back into some thick stitches. And I could have worked over this yarn, I think, as I was working the stitches, I just didn't think about it. But most of the time I sew my ends in like this. So then you wanna um, take your scissors like this, you wanna lay them flat and just cut like that. So that's how you weave in your end. So that's how you make these adorable dishcloths. And I hope that you enjoyed the video and leave comments below. Be sure to subscribe to our channel because we're creating a lot of new videos. And um, the links to everything are listed below. And thank you very much for watching.